from New York. Ebro in the morning. On Hot 97. Uh, we are Ebro in the morning. That is the lovely Laura Styles, Wrestling T. Rosenberg, and Miss USA. Give it up for Kyra McCullough. Thank you. Hey now. Is it McCullough or McCullough? McCullough. No I, GH. I, I almost corrected you today on the air, but I, I did. I love you. You told me. Too. You did a hard G. You should, I mean, come on. I mean, McC- everybody knows C- McCullough. McCullough. Yeah, it's no kind of just a thing. Maybe McCullough. It was McCullough. No, that's okay. Lord. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, Kyra, you are from? I'm from Virginia Beach originally, but I live in the District of Columbia now. And, nice. And so when you got me as me as Miss USA, <laughs> the USA. Other, Miss USA, USA, <laughs> the other day, uh, you definitely repping DC. All day, definitely. I mean, the the overwhelming support that I have from the city. It's by far more than I've ever expected. And to have, like, back-to-back title holders is amazing. So I know D.C. is just, like, going crazy. Beautiful and, women in D.C., bro. Look, and mean, smart women, too. So. That's very <laughs> All right. All right. Fine. Um, so let's get right to it. Uh, you're all over the news today because your response to the question, I believe, is health care a privilege? Was that the question? The question actually was, is health affordable health care? I told y'all affordable was right. in it. Okay. Was it, and it, and it was, is affordable health care a right or a privilege, right? Yes. Yeah. And your response? Well, my response, if I can clarify as well, is that, yes, I am privileged to have health care. I don't take any of that for granted. And essentially, I was saying that having a job and having health care is a privilege, and I'm thankful for those opportunities. Do I believe that people have the right to affordable health care? Of course I do. And I think cultivating jobs is a way for people to get health care. Got it. Um, your response at the time obviously caused a bunch of turmoil. It wasn't as clean as that. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> um, but you've perfected it over the last several days, and we salute you for that. <laughs> Clarify. Well, well that, 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 that's got to be a high-pressure situation. Like, did you know that question going into it, or do you get blindsided by the question? I mean, no. You just have to, like, go in there knowing yourself. Knowing things that are going around in the you know around the world, issues and such like that, and essentially, the question and the answer both started a dialogue, which we need a healthy dialogue to talk about issues that are going on in our nation. Great, great. She's doing. She's getting better, guys. Miss USA step is by step. getting tight. Um, I brought up to this morning as we listened to one of your responses from the other day, where you were kind of still working on sharpening this response. Up I think it was a TMZ response. A TMZ response, but whatever. We'll, okay. Um, the. The conversation of what is affordable and what is not, right? Because I do believe um, that in America we are learning that there is a serious faction of people that don't believe that health care is a right. They believe it is 100% a privilege, and if you can't get a job and if you can't figure it out and you don't get health care, oh well. Right? Like, that is who the president feels like the president is. That feels like the people who support that president. That feels like the tone. Well, there are definitely, there have always been people who do feel because that the, way. And there also are countries where universal health care, whether you're poor or not, nah, everyone has it. It's not even up for a mm-hmm. conversation. But here in America, that's not the case. Um, is that an America that you would like to see where universal health care, everyone had it, no matter what your economic bracket, no matter what? where you come from, et cetera, et cetera. Is that what you would love to see? I mean, of course you want to see a healthy lifestyle across the entire nation. You want to see your people being taken care of. Of course we would like to emulate and also live up to those standards, right? And when, it, like I said, when it comes to the portion of healthcare, you're saying like, oh, everyone's like, excuse me, <laughs> clumsy. You're saying like, well, if you don't have a job, you can't have healthcare. I don't think that's really the case necessarily, but more so... The, it's very divided. It is. There are certain people that feel strongly about it, there are other people who don't. But I do believe, though, as a nation, we should be taking care of all of our people. And that's the point I want to hone in. We have to make sure we're taking care of our people. Well, yeah. and then that's a whole other conversation because there are people who in this country, and we're seeing it, we're, we live in racist America. It's very racist. Who is our people? Are these people who already have citizenship? Are these people who are working on citizenship? Are they, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. So I know, like, right now, like, the conversation is going on a huge tangent. So I think we could, we can stay like on track. That'd be great. But that's like a conversation for another day. That's going to take I was a actually much gonna, longer, much longer. I was actually going to call you on the same thing. Here, here's much my here's my problem. Response. And I told you, and I said quite elo- like quite clearly on the air today. I want to know if it was eloquent, but it was it clear. wasn't eloquent actually. But I will say, I said quite clearly on the air today, and I say this with all due respect. I have respect for you winning Miss USA and what that means, and it's cool. I have, because I'm not in the pageant world, obviously I didn't know who you were previous to that. Why I all of a sudden would then really be interested in what all you guys' political views are or views on healthcare are, I don't understand. 
And like, so now we're sitting in a situation where we're trying to almost catch her. Let's be real. We're sitting with like, hey, so how do you feel about healthcare? Well, was it was actually, one question as part of a pageant. I'm not even trying to She's catch her. She's not a healthcare advocate. I'm not trying to catch her. I'm trying to detail and have an open dialogue about how nuanced it all is, right? Because it is very much... There are people who think this way. There are people who think that way, right? Like, I'm not saying you feel that way or I feel that way, right? Um, I'm just saying it is a nuanced conversation because what's affordable to one may not be affordable to, to another. The next, yes. There's a bunch of people, we see them all the time, talking about these, you're not American, and and other people are like, well, I'm a citizen. Why would you say I'm not American? Well, you're an immigrant. What, what are you talking You know what I mean? These are all the conversations that are happening today. And you have to know that the reason it even became such a hot topic for you is because... You have brown skin, and I don't even know your background. You are an ethnic. You might be black. You might be something else. I don't even know what you consider yourself. But you think that's why it became a bigger issue? But it became issue? a hot yeah, topic so because too. of your complexion, because people were like, wait a minute. She's saying health care is a privilege? Hold up. Because you are, what is your ethnic background? I'm African-American. You're black. Mm -hmm. Because she's black, she's supposed to agree with all black people. And all, most black people would say that health care is a right, not a you know, I'm just saying this right, is the tone. Right, right. But I'm not but once again, all black people don't agree. Some That's, black people might be like, nah, healthcare is a privilege. This is America, this is a capitalist country. And guess what? If you can't keep up, you're getting left behind. Other people will be like, Guess what? what? I could picture someone I know very well saying something like that. Myself. That's right. And and um, but also you might have people who go, Well, no, it's a right. Like these are why wouldn't we want someone to have health care? We don't want people becoming uh, uh sick in the streets and just being out in the streets would not be so not trying to catch you. Don't no, think no, that. No. I'm just trying to continue the dialogue. You think I'm trying to catch you? And I think you're doing keep, a great job continually, you know, continuing this dialogue because that's what we need. It's all about healthy discussion. So, I mean, I'm more than flattered that maybe my answer has, like, you know, ruffled this and, like, started conversation, but that it's be good. Some, is there part of it that's irritating, though? Because you get the Miss USA win. That's a big deal. Yeah. And then because something happened, like, because there's an interesting moment, that piece of the conversation almost overtakes the excitement of winning or is that not been not at all that's why i'm here to also tell you i'm a huge advocate advocate for stem enrichment in children especially women uh, i struggle with math as a child and that's why i started my own self-funded program called science exploration for kids i want children to see that science is a fun environment it expands your imagination it gives you a great career path and uh, that's so nothing, I don't feel like anything's overshadowed. I feel like in a sense, I'm able to still advocate and give my voice right. on the things that I actually care about. That's dope. As long as you get the opportunity, the microphone, the mic time, you can do your thing. Yo, 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 it's Kyra McCullough Sit. on Hot 97. <laughs> oh. Hit the beat. She's ready for these bars. Now, just so you know, uh, by the way, speaking of science, our very own Laura Styles was the only Spanish chick in space camp. Well, I, listen, what okay. I made it here. One, but no, I no, back then in that specific the camp. time that I did, yes, I right. was the only one. Yep. What year was this? 1972? I don't even know what year. Bro, it was. when are they going to make 1972? But what was the movie that came out last year about space? And, what? and the ladies who... Hidden Fences? Oh, no. hidden when figures. is Laura's, when are Laura's <laughs> movie coming out? <laughs> Where's Laura's yeah. Hidden Figures? Figures. It's hidden figures. Hidden figures. Hidden figures. When's her movie figures. coming out? <laughs> Which one? It's not. How about the first Latina in Spanish? The first Latina in Spanish? Say Hidden in Spanish. I don't know. Hey, can you say hidden figures? Escondida or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> you gotta disrespect. Oh, so when did you move to, to DC? In summer of 2013, after I graduated from South Carolina State University with a degree in chemistry and concentrations in radio chemistry. Wow. Whoa. Wait, what's radio <laughs> so have, chemistry? Tell them out. It's like yeah. a form of nuclear chemistry. So if you can date back to like the fifth grade and look at your periodic table, right. there are two rows extracted at the bottom. Do you know what those are? Come on, you bro. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come <laughs> on. They're, they're called radionuclides. So that's what I focused on. Mm -hmm. Those jumped out at you. You're like, I like those, those ones. guys. Yeah. Those, those, those little ones. I, they I, look exactly. wacky. I want to play with the little ones down there <laughs> at the bottom. But the whole pageant world is really like it's it's a it's a unique thing, right? Was that something you always wanted to do? Because I know girls have been in that pageant like I world since they were kids. Right. So that yeah. it's like, you know, real family rooted. There Was are that the same few. thing for you? Not at all. So I mean, extremely shy. Um, didn't really care about my image when I was younger. Just really had no effort in a lot of things, but I secretly always wanted to try it. And I think that was like the paradigm shift for me, saying, you know what, Kyra, time waits on no one. You need to get up here and do the things that you want to do and stop being afraid. So that's my message to women and children everywhere as well. You are the one who will actually be the one to drive your destiny. Therefore, action creates opportunity. So take hold of any opportunity you want and go with it. And you just felt this would be an opportunity for you 
to be able to pursue other things and spread your message? Like, do you still want to pursue chemistry or wait, uh, or whatever, okay, so you, whatever science word you just said that you studied? <laughs> so uh, radio so chemistry. So, right. Radio <laughs> chemistry. Right. All right. He gets 100 points. There you go. So let's, um, let's, you have two you questions, still want to right? Do, yes. Well, you know, I, I didn't necessarily do this thing. I want new opportunities. I, you know, I just looked at it as sense as that's something I wanted to do. And then I went after it. And now that I'm in it, I see like, wow, there are opportunities to reach so many young women and children. So like I said, I have a self-funded program called Science Exploration for Kids. And I would like to expand that. I want to continue to visit schools, especially around the New York area. I mean, especially just around the entire, you know, domestic, you know, United States and really just like go to schools, do programs with high school students, Love um, it. projects with children. That's what I do. And maybe even tutoring on the side, we can gather some things up and do like fun homework days or something. So what happens after you win Miss USA? Like, what is what happens? Like, what do you do? Yo, 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 no, <laughs> so, like, right. right. <laughs> Bars. Yeah, no, it's just a lot of appearances. You work okay. very closely with the sponsored organizations, such as the Smile Train, Best Buddies, and you just hold the the stature that the Miss Universe organization is about. It's about empowering women. It's letting women know that they're confidently beautiful. It's allowing women to see, you know, nationwide and globally that. Although we may stand in this typical realm of pageantry, we're breaking stereotypes every day. And that's why I'm here as well, to share my message. Wait, so Donald Trump's your boss? No. Or who owns so the Miss... with the program, man. I don't know. <laughs> I'm asking. That he was a question. <laughs> no, I no. I, IMG now owns Miss Universe. IMG. Okay. And so uh, um, Miss USA is, goes to Miss Universe next. Is that yes. what you do? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I just... Just remembered that. That's crazy. When is, oh, that's when is that going to be? When does that happen? It's going to be between November and January. So, so you will be part of that competition. Yes. Representing America. USA. Wow. The United States Ooh, of America. Yes. So here's what I don't understand. There we go. Miss America. Who's that? Just another organization. Another phenomenal woman. And do they get to compete woman. in Miss Universe too? No. No. She stops at Miss America. So they done. <laughs> done so for you, Miss America. <laughs> wait, wait, why? I'm just because she's not a part of Miss Universe. Miss USA goes on to Miss Universe, right. bro. Miss America, Miss that's America was done so. That's and, it. And shout out to our beautiful Miss Universe, Iris. She's so kind. Now, who is the, who is this now? Iris from France. Miss France is now okay. Miss Universe. God, yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know. This. Yeah. My Miss know. Universe and yours as well. <laughs> quick, quick update for you because I know. And by the way, how can you be Miss Universe when you only covered Earth? When are they going to start going to Mars? Like, Very good point. <laughs> I mean, you're in science. I mean, I now like we're Yo, we, we doing out here, bro. It's my what opportunity. Are we doing? I like that. I'm. <laughs> Taking this notes right now. Radio chemistry, your ass on up here to Mars. <laughs> Let's get this pop. Yo, we, we need a What's Miss, going on? A Miss Pluto in the competition. Miss Uranus. <laughs> no, no, really. No. All right, what, in 2015, um, Donald Trump was co-owner of the pageant. Then he got in trouble. NBC decided to end the relationship with him. Then he bought their stuff, uh, and so he owned it completely. And then he sold it outright to WME IMG, which is of course a famous talent agency. Got it. Cool. So that's kind of a cool thing about it too. Is that it's owned by WME IMG. Should you have other interests, it is owned by an agency, which is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah and look at the phenomenal women that came before me, such as Pia. So she's now actually. We interviewed Pia. Oh yeah, Pia came oh, over yeah. here. Yeah, she was here. She was yeah. awesome. Cool she's great, right? I, I never told you guys I ended up uh, having a relationship with her. A Twitter relationship? No, no, no. Romantic. We had a romantic yeah, relationship. Yeah, okay. We, have a lot, no. we, have we have jumped in our DMs. So you jumped in our DMs. Back on tracks. <laughs> 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 As hey, well as Deshauna Barber, just phenomenal women that are actually working very closely with the IMG brand. Can we have you on the show more often to keep Rosenberg in line? Yeah, I mean, love. at three different occasions during this She's conversation, like, uh, you're like, all right, enough. Yeah, yeah. Focus, team. Focus, fam. We're supposed to be DC family. And then Look, you just, I think I've, I've just studied y'all enough that I'm like, you know what? I'm ready to come in here. That's right. Good for you. Take, take a hold of the show. I bro. like this. I like this. Are you a Redskins fan? Of course I am. See? Oh, see yeah. I was hoping she now said he Cowboys. Now oh, oh, no. Right now. Were you, did you grow up a Redskins fan in Virginia? I did. Because so. they're, they're a big, obviously a big deal in Virginia as there well. There are. My father is like a diehard Redskins fan. I even had a comforter growing up that was Redskins. Wow. So I still have, it's like a mink blanket. We got it in Japan wow, when I was not, younger. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Who are your parents? Yeah. <laughs> a mink Military. Blanket. My mother ah. was a chief petty officer in the Navy. She spent 23 years in the Navy. Wow. Lived in Japan. I was born in Italy. I've been to South Korea. I mean, I mean, uh, Hawaii. There's so many places I've been. I can't even recall. That's so, you, so you were a, were you a military brat like throughout your whole childhood? Did you bounce all around? I was. Nice. That's pretty yeah. cool. And that's how you ended up. And of course, Virginia Beach is a big military town. It is very slow. Military. How did that bounce? Around? <laughs> you hear a lot of successful military kids, and then you hear some kids who are like, oh, "I was a military brat, so I never really found friends." Uh, it affects everyone differently. Um, how did that moving around help you? 
in what ways? Right. Um, experience worldwide culture, for one. I have an appreciation for everyone, no matter where I go, because there's faux pas everywhere you go. And I'm, I especially like, you know, like, I love Asian culture. Uh, I love Hawaii. I mean, I love Italy. So, like, you understand everywhere you go, everyone acts differently, back to the point you made as well. So, and um, although it may have probably altered my friendship relationship, too, I think it also put me in a perspective of being strong. Seeing my mother as a chief petty officer in the Navy, knowing she's broke so many stereotypes, come home, like, you know, telling us stories about things. I know for a fact that that enabled me to be a strong woman. Mm. And additionally, I, I've had friends that have um, moved around so much that they weren't able to keep friends. But the thing is, I keep in touch with so many of my childhood friends. One of my bestest friends, Paige, like, she lives in Destin, Florida now. Like, we still chit chat. We got together all in Myrtle Beach recently. I'll be walking down the street. I was in Atlanta for like a party, for like a friend, a birthday party. I turned my head and I saw my third grade classmate, you know? So you remember, that's great memory. Right, right? I have really good visual memory. I mean, I saw you and I was like, yeah, I know him. But yeah, I mean, honestly, it's it gives you like just a perspective on life. And I mean, I'm thankful. And now because we moved around so much, I can't stay in one place anymore. Mm. That's why. Welcome to New York, Kyra. I'm here. Hot 97, well, what's up? Oh, you're at <laughs> Seattle you're, Clubs. You're, she will not be at Ace of Spades. She will no. not be at the strip club. No. She can't go. No, you got she to got to run Miss Universe. Yeah, she had, not until post-November, certainly. Yeah, Just, we got to make sure this Miss Universe thing goes right. We can't have Kyra yeah, out Watch out for New York. The, cl the club scene here is weird. It's all become like strip clubby. New York strange. Well, you stay in Manhattan. Be you stay in Manhattan. In Manhattan, you'll be, be fine. fine. Yeah, you'll be fine. Okay, cool. If I catch you out in this meat pack and wild him out. <laughs> no, well, that's, that's, that's where it would be. That's the scene. The Gans of Order over there. How on the roof. 25. 25. That's where she's going to go. Is I don't think you were supposed to ask that. Well, I think it's probably known in the thing. I don't even know ask a woman her name. But she was in a pageant. Age. Don't you think it was like announced information? I want, I want to correct you. Competition. In a competition. Competition. Okay. You know, trust me. She knows these things. You know I know? Because she's confidently beautiful, Ebro. Spit that. Oh my God. It's the motto of this universe. <laughs> Kyra McCullough, Miss USA. Thank you for coming up and, 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 and clarifying and being so awesome and this. great. And come back after you win Miss Universe, too. I love that. Thank you. I will be after back. You so thank you so much. And we're going to have you and Miss Pluto on at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>